their voices soft as thunder as they tear your hope apart as they turn your dream to serious errors would be picked up immediately by the technicians. By the time the evaluation is complete, the inspectors will have checked out the radials every 10 degrees to assure that the station is accurate in every direction. Then at Oklahoma City, the inspection course will be recreated on a large model, the results carefully studied and a report compiled. Combined with other reports on the same station, a running life history is kept on each VOR. Of course, one of the most important aspects of the basic inspection is the installation of new or improved nav aids. This flight operation starts on the ground and works up. First, a team of electronic engineers check out the terrain to see if there are any obvious problems. We look for things uh, like power lines and other structures over there and ask the question beforehand what they might do to our signal. Now, in this case, we have reason to believe that we're far enough away not to have any interference. And this site uh, seems to fulfill our requirements. So as soon as we're satisfied with the place, we set up a temporary station, complete in every respect, only mounted on a truck. Then we can zero in the transmitter, check it on the ground, and take to the air, where it really counts because that's where the pilot uses it. Long before an airline uses a facility, and even before the equipment is installed, the inspectors have worked out the details required to make the instrument landing system accurate. The ILS provides an approach path for the alignment and descent of an aircraft to the runway. It is made up of three basic components. A glide slope to furnish vertical guidance and bring the aircraft down to the runway. A localizer to provide guidance to the runway center line. And distance markers to indicate distance from the runway. The first 